Hey y'all, hi. So today I am taking on this mammoth task as it turns out. Yeah, I've already filmed the video, so I know that it was a mammoth task. Applying and reviewing a full face of Jones Road Beauty makeup. A couple of months ago, I reviewed one product from Jones Road, the Miracle Balm, and there was so much more interest in that video than I expected there to be. But I was delighted when Jones Road reached out to me and asked if there was anything else I wanted to try. And I was like, yeah, everything, because I feel like everyone wants to know everything about all of the products, including me, because I was more impressed by the Miracle Balm than I expected to be, but it was kind of a roundabout journey to get there. So in this video, you'll see me apply to my face not every single product that Jones Road carries, but most of them, like really most of them. And I've been testing these products for a long time, so I have complete thoughts about each one. I've continued to be fascinated by this brand, and I'm really grateful to them for sending these products along so that I was able to do this for you today. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm so glad that you're watching this video. My name is Hannah. This is clearly a beauty channel. This is the kind of thing that I like to do. But I don't just review new products. I feel like a love of beauty is it's just a little bit about deciding what to buy. It's mostly about using the beautiful products that you do have. And so I try to keep that love of my existing makeup collection alive on my channel to inspire other beauty lovers to do the same. So that sounds good. I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Okay, so I already have the eye makeup on, the four eye makeup products that I'm testing from Jones Road. I have so many to test that if I do like a super deep dive with a long application process and explanation for each thing, the video will be unsustainably long for all of us. So what I'm going to do is to take my time with the complexion products. I don't have any of them on yet. I'm going to apply them and talk through as I go. I think that the complexion products from Jones Road are the ones in which people have the most intense interest. And after I do those, I'll go through the eye look and I'll roll the footage of myself applying this and I'll just kind of give you like a quick and dirty reviews of each one of these four products. So for complexion, we have what the foundation, we have the face pencil. I have two colors of the Miracle Balm that I didn't review last time. And I have the lip and cheek stick from Jones Road as well. Starting with what the foundation, which is the most notorious, intriguing product from Jones Road. I don't really have my finger on the pulse of social media. I'm not on TikTok. But my impression of what went down when this released was that it was received with kind of disgust and confusion by the beauty community and therefore went viral. When you look at the texture, you can kind of understand what the issue was. I mean, first of all, this is the lightest shade. It's called porcelain, which just looking at it seems like such a misnomer. And it appears just a tiny bit separated. It has that strong sort of ginger. I think that that's mostly what the smell is. I've determined that's mostly what the smell is. It's like a, a fragrant sort of ginger and herbal scent, same as the Miracle Balm. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it in the close-up, but it looks like there's a little bit of a liquid sitting on top, like oil or something has risen to the top and the surface of the pan just has this kind of pudding-like visual quality. When you touch it, it sort of bears that out. It almost, it's like feels like pudding, but it looks like a little bit separated and a little bit grainy. It just doesn't like appeal instantly in that cosmetic way. My first in-person encounter with this product is when I was at Khaki's house last month. She handed the jar to me and she was like, oh, this is the Jones Road Foundation because I had already reviewed the Miracle Balm, but I hadn't tried any other products. I opened it up and touched it and I was like, ew. Like, my first impression was just kind of a hard no. So when I received these products and I was like, okay, I'm buckling in. I'm going to give each one of them a fair shake. I'm going to do the most. I'm going to try to really understand what's going on. This one was like, first up. I was like, what is going on? And here's what I have to tell you. This is, frankly, quite a remarkable product. I had a little bit of this experience with the Miracle Balm. Of course, I will link that review down below in case you haven't seen it so you can click through and watch it. I won't do the deep dive on Miracle Balm in this video that I did in that one. But if you've seen that, you know that I was skeptical of the product and then it really, really, really won me over. I was even more intensely skeptical of this product and it has entirely won me over for what it is. My one disappointment is that the lightest shade, even though applied and blended out, it is actually much lighter than it looks. It still isn't light and neutral enough for me, so it hasn't won me over to the point where I'm like wearing it every day, but it's won me over to the point where I wish, I really wish that it was light enough so that I could be wearing it every day because now that I figured out what it's trying to do and how it should be applied, I'm kind of blown away. 
So here's what it's trying to do and how it should be applied. It's trying to blur and soften texture and fine lines on the face in a dramatic way while slightly tinting the skin and completely sinking into the skin and becoming one with the skin. It is skincare. It's not a foundation. It's tinted skincare, just like the Miracle Balm, and you have to think of it that way. So I think that the reason that people struggled with it so much and it it did so poorly, I mean, when something goes viral, it's not doing poorly, but I think that the reason that people got such a bad impression of it in that launch was that they were trying to apply it like with a sponge or with a brush and layer it on like a coverage foundation. It's just not. It is something that you have to apply in thin layers and blend in completely really like a moisturizer. I'm going to do that on half my face right now so you can see what I'm talking about. And even that fingerful that I had, I think was a little bit too much. I'm going to wipe off what remains on my hand and just rub in what's left. Okay, so what I've done is I've put it on this half of my face and not on this half. And I put it all over my forehead and I pinned my bangs back so that you could really see my forehead. And I really just brought it halfway across my chin and halfway across my nose. I'm gonna zoom you in and take some footage. Hopefully you'll be able to see in that zoomed in footage and also at the more zoomed out distance, which I'm filming most of this video, what I see in person, which is just that my skin looks so healthy, so plumped, and there's something about the filtering quality of the product, the quality of the emollients that has blurred my fine lines. My crow's feet are much more apparent on the side of my face where I didn't apply the product than they are on the side where I did. My forehead Head. I know I applied it across the whole forehead because I had just put too much up there and I just I needed to spread it all the way out. But hopefully you'll be able to see how softened, smooth, and plump my forehead looks. I'm about to turn 38 and I've never had any work done on my face. So I have fine lines on my forehead. At this point, you can see them even when my face is at rest. And when I first put this product on my face, the first time I was testing it, I had my hair all slicked back and my face was completely bare. And I looked in the mirror and I looked at my forehead and I was like, it looks like I had Botox, especially from a a little bit of a distance. It's just so beautifully texture refining. And obviously slightly tinted, you know? I mean, the big disappointment for me is that color. It's basically the color of my skin with redness, but I'm trying to cancel that redness when I apply base products. It's just several shades darker. You can actually see I brought the product not onto my neck, but like underneath the curve of my jaw. And so you can even kind of see the line there where the product is like kind of orange and dark and it ends and the color of my skin begins. So, you know, I need a a what the foundation that's this color to brighten and counteract the redness in my face. I think that if I did have one that was like a good correcting color for me, like a true match, I would be having an even more positive experience. For me, it just feels like I'm applying a skincare product that really refines the texture of my skin, but without doing anything to help with the tone. The thing that I want to communicate the most is what it feels like upon application. It feels like an extremely nourishing, emollient, stiff, waxy final layer of skincare. It feels like it is putting on like a a sealing top layer that's going to seal in the moisture and itself be dewy, but dewy in that kind of waxy way. So, you know, stiff, sturdy rather than like Vaseline and slidey. It's not at all oily. It's more waxy. It feels like waxes are being crushed and blended into the pigment when it's being blended out in the skin. And all of that is sort of seamlessly sealing over whatever is underneath it and creating that like soft filter effect on the skin. And I assume if you had something that was a better match, like a color evening, like a tone evening effect on the skin. I can totally understand why, given my experience with the Miracle Balm, which I kind of included is something that makes a lot of sense for someone who's not really into makeup, who's like intimidated by makeup, who just wants one thing that'll do everything, who's worried that they don't know how to apply makeup and they don't want to end up looking clownish. You know, someone like my mom, I kind of determined that that's the target audience for that product. Given that that is the case, and I've sort of started to develop a sense of the target audience for Bobbi Brown as being that person, I totally understand why this product is the way that it is. I'm going to finish off the rest of my face and maybe we can pay a little bit of attention to like how much coverage there is there. So that's like a thick layer, kind of like the way that I think people were applying it on TikTok that is not 
what it's supposed to be, you know? That's the amount of pigment that it has if you put on a thick layer. But I think the way it's meant to be applied, what I advocate doing is more like that, like genuinely like rubbing in a moisturizer. You can see those blemishes have all popped back through because the layer is so thin. And that was a very thin layer just on this entire part of my face. Like I have actually more on this side of my face, but I just wanted you to kind of see the way that it shears out. So again, you can kind of see the color there, the coverage, but it's just, it's too much for getting the effect, too much for the formula to take, to have it on that thickly. It just feels so good, like get, like rubbing it into parts of my face where I know that I have fine lines, like my crow's feet right here that are starting to crinkle around my mouth, my marionette lines. And it feels so good to be rubbing it in there because I can feel that it's like nourishing that part of my skin. Like it just feels like my skin is drinking it in, but not drinking it all the way in. Like it's also leaving that filtering layer behind it doesn't pill at all. It doesn't give me any trouble. It interacts really well with my skincare underneath. And it's just heavy duty in terms of moisture and protection, which is just this kind of thing I love. I've, again, dry, rapidly maturing skin. And I think with it on my whole face, if you know how I usually do my makeup, which is to make my skin this color, then you know that this is not sufficient for me. Like I need something more green, more neutral, and just more pale. But I think my whole face looks so much better than it did before I applied it. And this is the thing, it's hard for me. I usually don't review makeup base products where there's like not a color at all, nothing close to a color for me because it can be hard to see the quality of the product through the fact that the tonal match is so bad. I just am really interested in Jones Road, so I decided to do my best with this one. And I feel like it's just very aggressively telegraphing its positive qualities, even though the very large drawback is there. So the one drawback for me is the overall color. The other drawback is that it hasn't covered my blemishes. It has softened and it's just like this part of the face, like the part of my face where I don't have blemishes, but where the issue is more like maybe some sallowness, a little bit of puffiness, pores, not great texture, a little bit of fine lines, like the parts of my face where it's just about that and it's not about concealing blemishes or changing the tone. It looks like I just finished freshly applying my skincare Care. And then I've layered on like an amazing, slightly illuminating, but also pore blurring primer. So I think even if there were a good color for me in this product, it still wouldn't be enough for me. I would still need, especially, you know, on days when my skin is like how it is now, I would still need to do some spot concealing. As it is, I need to do more than spot concealing. I need to like change the color. So I've been using this Manasi 7 Skin Enhancer, which is just like a pure white cream product. And you know, in doing this, I've, I'm sort of treating the Jones Road with the foundation like a primer, a primer that makes my skin look and feel amazing, but that has the drawback of like actually darkening my skin a little bit. So I really need to work to counteract it. I've been using the Manasi 7 white and I've also been using my green color corrector because it's the best way to counteract that like dark orangey redness, even better than using a foundation that's a good match. So rubbing it in with my hands, I can really feel the waxiness of what the foundation blending with the two mix-ins. It kind of became one product on my skin and the color is much better. Like you can really see it right here as opposed to what's behind those dots over here. It's not a absolutely perfect match, but it's much, much closer and it will definitely work for me, especially once I go in there and do some spot concealing. Those two products that I added have some coverage, but they didn't turn it from a sheer product into like a full coverage product. So of course I'm still gonna need to spot conceal. And these healing blemishes are pretty dark in color. So that would probably be true of any base product that I use today. But apart from those spots, every other part of my skin has really come up to snuff with the mixing in of those white and green products. So for the purposes of demonstrating this product, I think that I've gotten it close enough with those mix-ins, except I am gonna do a little bit of spot concealing. And to do it, I'm actually gonna use the Jones Road pencil. So here's what it looks like. Again, this is the lightest shade. That's the color. It's a little dark and orange for me, you know, just all things considered. And here it is next to a swatch of what I usually use to spot conceal, which is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. That's in Chantilly, the lightest shade that's underneath it. So you can see it's darker and more orange than my usual spot concealer. It doesn't blend as well into my skin. So that's not ideal, but texturally it, it does work for this kind of thing. So that's just spot concealing with my hand, my finger like this, and the Jones Road pencil. It's pretty creamy for a pencil, but it also has that body 
like that stiffness. Like the Soft Matte Complete Concealer, that means you can build it, you can use it for coverage. Just the color, you know, like I wouldn't put it under my eyes to brighten because it doesn't brighten on me. I can't get a brightening effect with any of the Jones Road complexion products because they're all too dark. But what I have managed to get, I feel, is a complexion that coverage-wise and texture-wise is very beautiful and that if my skin weren't as light and as neutral olive as it is, would be really exciting. One of the things that's super exciting to me is how nourished and protected my dry skin feels, especially given that it's the middle of winter. I would actually go so far as to say that if you have oily skin, what the foundation might not be a good choice for you because it feels like heavy skincare designed for dry and or mature skin. That is exactly what it feels like, like a protective layer. It's not as though it's, again, greasy, like it's not staying emollient in like a slidey way throughout the day, but it feels a little bit heavy. It's interesting. It has a heaviness of like a waxy cream rather than the heaviness of a cakey foundation because cakey is the last thing that it will ever be because it's so not dry. It's really quite unique, just like the balm, just like the Miracle Balm. It's really quite unique and effective in its way. But if you have quite oily skin, I would say this might not end up working for you. However, the pencil is gratifyingly kind of stiff and, and thick and pigmented and more on the dry side for a concealing product. I think that if you have oily skin, you could really make it work. And if you have very, very dry skin, you might struggle with that. But it's like from the Jones Road line, that's what you're going to need for any kind of spot concealing. I can't believe how much I ended up liking the effect, especially of what the foundation, but really of both products together. The color is my main issue. And the main thing, the takeaway, the really important piece of information out of all of what I just did is that what the foundation is not meant to be layered on like a foundation. It is not meant to be built up to be the color that it is in the jar. It is skincare. You just have to think of it as skincare, something that you rub in like a moisturizer until it basically disappears. And that's how you get that beautiful, soft focus, skin refined. And if you've got a color that's good for you, I think tone evening effect. Okay, moving on to the two shades of Miracle Balm that color-wise I like a lot better than the two that I reviewed in the dedicated review of this product. I'm not gonna dwell too much on these because again, like there's a whole video all about Miracle Balm, but this is the most important piece of information that I have for you. This is Magic Hour, which is I think Bobbi Brown's favorite of the colors. Can you see the sort of translucent, almost pigmentless streaks mixed into this and the speckles? It's like it is like a clear Miracle Balm mixed with mix-ins as opposed to a blended pigment product. And I think Magic Hour is supposed to be more of like a sheer shiny, like less richly colored, more about the slightly bronzy shine shade. Yeah, like look at that. You can barely see the color. It's really, really subtle. I think that there aren't as small of pigment particles in Magic Hour. And because of that, you're basically mixing pure unadulterated miracle balm with some like shine specks emulsifying that on your skin and because of that it's softer it's like closer to like a waxy vaseline than the really hard waxy extremely sturdy gratifying texture of the other ones that i've tried this to me, either you have to apply way less of it to your cheeks or it's just gonna stay way more emollient throughout the day. It just, it feels much more like a lip balm. It feels much stickier and it has a lot less color. So Magic Hour for me, as you can see, I only tried it like a little bit. I had only taken a little dig out of it before sitting down to film this video today. It just has more of those qualities of like tackiness and messiness than the other shades that I've tried. Those qualities that I don't tend to like in a cheek product. And so even though the shades shade is really promising and it was one of the ones I was the most interested to try, I actually ended up liking it the least. So I just wanted to put that out there. Not all the Miracle Balms are quite the same. Oh, Natural, which I was really excited to try. However, it is harder. It is stiffer than Magic Hour. It has that, even though there's less strong color in it, something is slightly different about the formula. It, it's not as soft. It's not as melty. And when it buffs out, it retains that kind of slight stiffness that makes it feel a little bit more like a final layer 
layer of skincare than like a really glossy, sticky layer of Vaseline or something. Buffed out, it's totally colorless though. I mean, it's funny. The two products, the What the Foundation and the Miracle Balm, they do have something in common. Miracle Balm just feels like a much stiffer and more lightly pigmented version of the same thing. And indeed, I've heard Bobbi Brown say that when she created Miracle Balm, she was trying to create a foundation. So it's like Miracle Balm was sort of a step on the way, a step on the path towards What the Foundation, and then it makes total sense because they both feel to me like pigmented skincare products. So this is like, for me, a clear or nearly clear priming product, kind of like a stiff version of what the foundation without any pigment in it. And that way it's probably like a better all over face thing for me than any of the shades of what the foundation, which are all too dark. I haven't yet used it that way, but I know that some of you do. I've seen some comments on the other videos saying that you have Au Naturel and you use it like basically as a primer. So I'm intrigued by that. But I spent less time on these two Miracle Balms in preparation for this video because I've already reviewed this product. I just want to put the bug in your ear that Magic Hour is it's like much softer and much greasier than the other three that I've tested. Okay, the lip and cheek kind of product that I tend to love. None of the shades really spoke to me. They're all extremely bright, but it seemed from the site like they also might be very lightly pigmented and easy to wear. I have the shade Rosy Brown, and I don't know why it's called that because to me this is like a dark mauve. <laughs> Like, it's not brown at all. I don't understand why that's called rosy brown. But that's what it looks like, thickly applied. It, too, has this kind of emollient, skin carry feel. I mean, of course, that's what I would expect at this point. But as I would also expect, it, it feels stiff enough to hold its own, and that has been my experience. I'm going to apply it with a brush, actually. Again, no brown to be seen as far as I'm concerned, but um, a very pretty and difficult to mess up cheek product, although it's more pigmented than Miracle Balm, so maybe it's easier to mess up if you are prone to go too far. That's part of why I applied it with a brush, because I wanted to be able to really spread it around. I wish that this product came in some more natural, soft colors, like Miracle Balm does, because to me what it feels like is like a less intense, overwhelming, and even a little bit less confusing version of Miracle Balm, but in a stick. It's not as emollient. It doesn't have as much of that like intense waxiness in it, so it can be applied more like makeup and a little bit less like skincare that's just supposed to be only applied on your cheeks and lips. But the waxes that are in it give it the same beautiful finish. You know, it's, it's just got that exact same quality that Miracle Balm has. And in many ways, it's easier to interact with. So I just, I wish that there was more subtlety in the shades because I, they're all like bright orange and stuff. And you know, it's pretty pigmented. It's more pigmented than the most pigmented of the four Miracle Balms that I've tried, which was the really bright pink one. I just would love it if they would put the Miracle Balms into this format. And and by that I mean create the lip and cheek with the same ratio of pigment to medium and the same exact colors as the Miracle Balms have because that to me would be the best of both worlds. I think that this is probably an underrated product from Jones Road and maybe because the colors aren't as appealing. It's so much more makeup-y. I think part of the appeal of the line overall is that it feels more skin carry. It feels more natural. And this is just like brighten up your cheek, pop of color. But Miracle Balm does that. And this is just you have to have a much, much lighter hand. It's pretty. You know what I mean? It's pretty. I just don't find it to be subtle and sophisticated and exciting and editorial and inspiring the way that the browny, mauve-y, beige taupey kinds of blushes and lip products that I really love are. So it's just not at the top of the pile for me. That's it for my little face. Let me talk you through the eye look. So I applied four products to my eyes today. The Best Eyeshadow, which is like a little single color powder eyeshadow in a compact. The Best Pencil, which is like an eye pencil or an eyeliner. Sparkle Wash, which is a liquid eyeshadow. And then the Jones Road Mascara. So I have the Best Eyeshadow, this powdered eyeshadow in the shade Patna. The color is phenomenal. I love this color for eyeshadow. It's spot on. It's like a silvery, taupey, platinum-y, mauve-y shade. It's rich, it's shiny, but it's not too, too dark. So it can easily be applied in a single wash all over the lid, even for someone as pale as I am. I love this color for eyeshadow. I've been reaching for this kind of thing a lot lately, and I was so excited to see such a beautiful color delivered in this formula from Jones Road. The formula is also beautiful. It has 
has that soft kind of velvety, crushy, slightly creamy quality. It sticks to itself, like it sticks together, but there's lots of good fluffy texture there. It applies beautifully with fingers. It blends out beautifully and softly with a brush. I can use the same shade to create a little bit of depth in the outer corner, a little bit of sculpting, but not so much that it's hard to keep from going overboard. Blends out beautifully on the lower lash line. It's just a great one and done look. However, this compact arrived to me in the mail completely shattered and I had to press it back in. So you'll see when I hold the compact up to the camera, it's like all bumpy and messy. It's a total mess because it arrived as a total mess and it's just been hard to like press it back in and clean it up. So that's something of which to be aware. But to me, that's the only drawback. This is actually one of my favorite things that I've tried from Jones Road. For a single eyeshadow where it's just delivering the one thing, to be very impressive is kind of difficult because I think it has to check all the boxes if it's just like that's one eyeshadow in one color and that's all it is. And for me, this one checks all the boxes, except for the box of being able to ship without getting damaged. The eye pencil is a bit of another story for me. It is a very hard, dry pencil. It's the kind of thing that works pretty well for just like building a little bit of depth on top of the lashes, like on your skin. Maybe drawing a tiny, tiny cat eye, like just a little line there and then like darkening the lash line. But it's too dry and stiff to transfer to the waterline. The color payoff isn't very gratifying. The payoff overall isn't very gratifying. It doesn't have any kind of like creamy or gel-like qualities. It's just really dry. It feels to me like a very old school traditional eye pencil and it's not the kind of thing that I enjoy using. This is like the texture that I prefer for a lip pencil, like really sturdy and stiff, but that I don't tend to like for an eye pencil. Sparkle Wash is an interesting product. It's so beautiful. Similar to the color of Patina, the best eyeshadow, this color, which is called So Pretty, blew me away. It's got that lovely combination of like silver and gold and champagne and taupe and mauve and it just feels like it's not too light and it's not too dark and it's not too sheer, but it's not too pigmented and it's shining like a precious metal. You know what I mean? It just looks so beautiful swatched in the back of my hand. And it also looks really beautiful sheared out. It does dry down completely. It's pretty easy to apply. It reminds me a lot of like the old Stila glitter and glow formula. You run the risk a little bit of it picking up on itself if you try to layer it too quickly, if you don't let the layer fully dry before you add another layer. So you do have to kind of like work with a little bit of delicacy if you're applying it as an all over the lid look to blend out the edge and then let it dry completely and then build a little bit more. Because it dries down so firmly, I had really high hopes for this as like something that I could use to make my lids wet looking and shiny just all by itself. Because when it's sheared out, it actually shears out to be almost colorless and it just looks like a layer of Urban Decay Space Cowboy or something, even less pigmented than that. Just really, really shiny and Vaseline-y wet. But when I wore it like that all over the lids just by itself, it creased. It didn't hold up by the end of the day, even though it had set down, it didn't have the longevity. What I've ended up really liking it for is as a topper, as I used it today, just like a little bit on the center of the lid going up towards the brow, little column in the center of the lid. And it's applied like that in sort of a thin layer on top of a powder shadow. It does stay all day. It has much better longevity. I think that even though it's more billed as like an eyeshadow on its own, it works better as a topper. I'm pretty fond of it because I love the color and the quality of the shine, but it doesn't do everything that this type of product sometimes does. And lastly, the Jones Road Mascara. Big, thick, fluffy, and very curved brush. Darkly black, pigmented, and pretty lengthening. The shape of the brush and the longevity of the formula also cause this to create and to hold a pretty significant curl in the lashes when it's applied with like sweeping motions with the brush angled that way. And I think you can see on my lids today that it's kind of like lifted and curled up my lashes. It's such a wet, heavy, kind of significant formula that if you don't pay attention and kind of go in soft strokes, you do run the risk of getting some of your lashes all sort of clumped together. It doesn't have the same fluff creating sort of fibrous girthiness that more fiber building mascaras tend to have. So I have admired its good qualities while not falling totally in love with it. I know that some people say that this is the only mascara that will hold the curl in their lashes 
And so if what you really, really want is that, if curling and lifting your lashes to open your eyes is your main concern, then this might be worth taking a look at. I would say if you have a mascara that you already love, if you're like a devotee to a certain formula, then this probably isn't going to replace that or one-up that because there's a chance that there are things that your beloved mascara does do this doesn't do. So if you already love your mascara and you're placing a Jones Road order, don't worry too much about the mascara. If you don't have a mascara that you love, if you don't really know what you're looking for in a mascara, but you want one that's going to perform, like that's really going to give you a lash look and going to help you kind of sculpt your lashes and darken them and lengthen them, and you're placing an order from Jones Road and you're like, is it worth it to add the mascara? Then yeah, I would say it's good enough, it's impactful enough, impressive enough, that I wouldn't caution you against it. I just have not found myself reaching for it for any reason other than to get a lot of use out of it so that I would be able to give feedback on it for this video. For me personally, it's good but not great. I think that's it. Gosh, full face is exhausting. This isn't something that I do very much. It's exhausting. I mean, because, you know, I like to be really thorough. I like to, I like to give you all of the tea up, down, all around town. So I am left both feeling spent and feeling a little bit worried that I might have left something out. If you think that I did, let me know in the comments and I'll try to keep close track of them and I'll try to respond to any serious questions about these products with information that I have but maybe failed to deliver. Overall, I've continued as I was after testing Miracle Balm to be more impressed than I thought I would be by Jones Road. I think that if you understand that the complexion products are really meant to be rubbed into your skin like lotion, like skincare, and you treat them that way and you don't try to make them work like full coverage foundation or like blush, then you will get there too with these products if you decide to try them. You'll, you'll understand why it is that so many people love them so much. But again, I'll say, as I said at the end of the Miracle Balm video, I feel like the Jones Road customer is someone really specific and not necessarily the makeup aficionado. Not necessarily. I feel like with what the foundation, if you are a makeup aficionado and you feel like this sort of really skin protecting emollient skin softening tinted balm. It's kind of like a cross between a foundation balm and a tinted moisturizer. So the thing I dislike about tinted moisturizer is that it sits on top of the skin and just looks like a lotion with streaks of pigment in it on me. This doesn't do that. So I feel like it's the first product that delivers what a tinted moisturizer delivers that I've ever liked and that I've ever felt like I would use regularly if there was a shade for me. So if that is something you're looking for, maybe, like maybe it's worth giving it a try. But as I said with the Miracle Balm, I'll say if you have a lot of makeup that you love and you love the way you put yourself together every day and you're just kind of curious about this, don't worry about it. I, I really feel like all of these products, it's makeup for people who just want to make one order a year from one company and just get like their one eyeshadow, their one complexion product, their one blush and, and lip, like cheek and lip product, their one mascara, and that's all they're ever going to wear and they never want to think about it because makeup isn't their passion. It's just something that they feel like helps them be a little bit more put together or you may maybe need it professionally like maybe you're in a work environment where you kind of feel pressured to wear it these products are perfect for that person right because they just they don't demand too much of you and they don't demand expertise they don't demand that you watch a bunch of youtube to figure out how to use them except for that you need to know that you rub the balms in like skincare rather than applying them with a brush or a sponge but i usually feel when i'm making content like that's not who i'm talking to you know i usually feel like i'm talking to people who take a great pleasure in like curating creating a makeup collection and having an array of products and trying a bunch of different things. And I think that if that's you, you probably don't need Jones Road. Like that's kind of, that's kind of how I've ended up feeling. My hair has fallen flat over the course of this video. Fluff it up a little for the outro, but I don't really have anything else to say except thank you so much for being here. Thank you for subscribing if you decided to do that. Yay. Thank you for liking and commenting and all that you do. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourselves so that you can be the most effective versions of yourselves as you do your work in the world.